One of the most common problems people have in the jungle is getting lost. And you know, certainly navigation here you know, has its own little uh, idiosyncrasies and can be a little bit tricky at times. But actually it's not that difficult and the, the basic principles you know, st still apply. The differences are that you know, in the jungle your line of sight is very limited, so you, you, know, you can't see landmarks far away. Uh, you may well not have a map. I mean, for this area that I'm in at the moment, the map is restricted. You're not allowed to buy the map, so you, know, you won't have a map. Even if you do, it probably isn't that accurate because a lot of the maps of the jungle are done uh, with aerial photography. And you know, I've certainly, uh, in some other areas, been following maps where streams are marked and they're simply not there. You know, so, um, yeah, you may not have maps. You know, methods of finding your direction using the sun, for example, don't really work so well here because, you know, where you get the rainforest, you're on the equator. If you're on the equator, yes, you know, the, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, but it basically goes, di you know, directly above you. So, you know, you, you can't find uh, north or south at noon in the same way that you can if you're in the northern or southern hemisphere. Um, not only that, but you can't see the sun half the time. Uh, you know, if you're using GPS, your GPS can go faulty. You know, there, there are difficulties in the jungle, you know. But if you use a compass, uh, you know, compass is very reliable. People have been using it for, you know, ages. And there's a reason for that. It, you know, it is actually a good method of finding your way in the jungle. You just have to know how to do it. So for navigation in the jungle, these are what I consider to be the basic tools. Uh, a good compass and, you know, I like a compass with a mirror and I'll, I'll show you why uh, in a minute. Um, pacer beads, you know, very important, and perhaps, you know, more importantly than the pacer beads, um, you know, is a notebook and a pen, because that allows you to record where you're going, but, you know, it, you'll, you'll forget otherwise, so, you know, that's very important. I mean, I've got a pen, you'd be better off with a pencil. Now, I just wanted to show you something here, um, which is, this is the button compass that I've been using for about a year now on my watch. So you can see that it's pointing north along that line there but if i get uh, my other compass and don't put it too close you can see that north is actually along this line here so it's 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 about there so this compass has has become demagnetized or you know something's affected it and it's it's something you need to bear in mind that uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I heard some advice once that, you know, you should always take two compasses, uh, you know, certainly into the jungle. And I think it's good advice. And, uh, you know, it was on some YouTube video and some guy had written in and said, yeah, if you've got two compasses and they're pointing in different directions, you know, which one do you believe? And, you know, it's a good point. Which one do you believe? Now, the point is, with this one, I started to notice it had gone wrong because I know which way east and west are. And I, and, you know, I check it every now and again and realised it was faulty. Uh, you know, I've now changed it to this one, and these are both pointing, thankfully, in the same direction. If you, you know, so you need to sort of check, before you go in, you need to check that your compasses are pointing in the right direction. Um, you know, it, and, you know, should you be in a situation where you have two compasses that are pointing in different directions, you know, the, the way you can check easily on the equator, anyway, is, you know, at dawn, and check, check where the sun is, basically, because dawn it's going to be in the east you know or in the evening at the west uh, you know and that'll give you a pretty good steer but really you need to make sure you've got two operational compasses um, before you go in okay so I've got my compass it's attached to a string and to a clip which clips onto my uh, belt loop got my pacer beads got a notepad and a pen the only other thing that I would recommend you might you might want to take in is like this sort of uh, plastic tape it's very very light and thin very visible in the jungle because uh, you know it's, it's so different from all the greenery that surround you um, now the reason this is useful is I mean you can you know cut the trees mark the trees uh, you know and trailblaze I don't particularly like doing that I don't like to cut down to you know where, where it's unnecessary also sometimes you know that can be confusing because other people have also maybe made cut marks or, or you might not be able to see them you know, so, you know, tape is quite good as, a, as an alternative. You know, there are plenty of ways of, uh, you know, marking um, checkpoints. Um, you know, I'm just using a dead tree here, so it won't work as well. Because um, I, I don't really like marking trees. But, you know, if I just cut that like so... Oops, didn't do that very well. Again. Right, like that. And I leave, you know, th this sort of mark on, on the trunk. 
uh, you know, it's easy for me to see on the way back. What I wanted to do here, I haven't done it very well, is get a, like a, a straight line, um, you know, there. So, uh, you know, it, it, it stands out more. But, you know, you can mark trees like that. You know, you can do it various ways. Um, but as I say, I don't particularly like doing it. I'd rather just take in some plastic tape and, and use that instead. Another uh, useful habit to get into is uh, as you're going in on a, on a trail, to turn around every now and again. You can do this every hundred paces or more often if you want. And look back at the trail that you've just followed, you know, followed into the jungle. Because that way, you know, hopefully it's more familiar to you when you're coming back out again. And, you know, in particular, try and recognize, you know, things like here, we've got like a fallen tree or whatever, and you just sort of try and picture it in your mind and form a mental map of that trail in terms of the, um, you know, what you're seeing around you. And, you know, it's, I tell you, it's a weird thing. The only times that I've actually lost my way in the jungle is when, you know, I've been with other people, which sounds bizarre. But when I'm on my own like this, I, I tend not to get lost because you're more alert, you know, you're, you're more sort of focused on what you're doing. Whereas if you're walking along a trail and you're talking to somebody and you're getting, you know, caught up in the conversation, you stop noticing, uh, you know, what's around you so much. You know, and it's easy for you, for you both to get lost simply because both of you are slightly distracted or if it's a group more of you are distracted. Whereas if you're on your own, as I say, you tend to be very focused and more alert to, you know, your surroundings. So this trail here is, uh, you know, what I would consider to be a, a very, very good and very clear trail in the jungle. And, you know, I certainly, you know, I wouldn't bother, you know, um, navigating too much because you know, I don't need to. I'm not going to stray off this trail. It's, it's too obvious. Uh, but the point is, in the jungle, is trails get overgrown very quickly. Or, you know, a tree can fall down and, you know, uh, or people can, you know, some people will go left, some people go right. So your trails will start to you know, diverge off to one side, then you've got animal tracks, uh, animal trails that can also confuse you. So, you know, it is easy to get lost in the jungle. If you use a compass and a pace counter, you know, you, you, you're really, um, you know, guaranteeing that you won't get lost as, as long as you do it properly. I'll cover navigation using GPS another time. You know, in a way, you know, it's very easy. If, if you've got, you know, um, uh, a GPS that works well in the forest, you know, uh, it, you know, it's a great way to navigate, no question about it. The problem with, um, you know, in a way with uh, using GPS is, is twofold. One is that it can, it can go faulty. You know, electronic things do go faulty in the jungle. Or your batteries can run out. You know, so it can let you down in a way that, you know, a compass won't. So, you know, that's number one. But the second thing that I found, you know, when I use GPS is that you sort of become over-reliant on it. And what I mean by that is, you know, you're so sure you know, you've got so much faith in the GPS that you kind of stop being um, conscious, so conscious of where you're going. You know, you, you stop making that mental map of, of your route in, in your mind because you're just confident the GPS is going to tell you where you are. So, you know, if something goes wrong, um, you know, your GPS breaks or whatever, you know, you'll find that, you know, you've, you've got really no idea of how to get back again. Whereas, you know, if you're using a compass in, in a strange sort of way, you're kind of getting, you're more in touch with the route that you're following. You know, uh, just one last thing I just wanted to say about, uh, you know, people getting lost um, is that, you know, quite often it happens when they're in a group. And, you know, I could be following a group um, who've gone up ahead, they've gone faster than I have. You know, I've come to a split in the trail. I'm not sure which way to go. You know, what do I do? Well, it's really simple. You just shout out, Oi! You know, don't be shy, you know, because the people are sometimes. They'll hear it, they'll shout back, you know. It's simple, but you know, that a number of people in Malaysia have got lost, you know, when they're in groups um, on a trail. And you know, there was a case a couple of years ago where the guy was never found, they didn't even find his body. So, you know, if that situation arises, don't be embarrassed that you got lost. Everybody gets lost in the jungle sooner or later. Shout out, uh, you know, that they'll probably hear you. Sound actually carries better in the jungle than a lot of people think. Uh, they shout back then you know which way to go. To navigate in the jungle just with a compass, i.e. without a map, you need to be very familiar with uh, taking bearings, using back bearings, and using dead reckoning. And dead reckoning, by the way, the dead isn't D-E-A-D, -E it's dead for deduced reckoning, which means that you deduce your position from where you started and the record that you've kept of, of where you've gone. 
So I tried to film this in the jungle, but it was too difficult for me to show what I was taking bearings on. So I've just come out here on the bike. Um, I'm going to take a bearing on a tree over there and then use that bearing to come back to the bike. And it'll just, I know it sounds, you know, like very obvious, but it's, it's something that you need to be very familiar with, uh, you know, if you want it to work for you in the jungle. Okay, here's my motorbike. And then over there, I've marked a tree with some red tape that we're going to take a bearing on. So that's what we'll do first. Okay, so I'm going to take a bearing on that tree over there. I'm not going to do this exactly because it's a bit difficult with the camera. But this is where the mirror is very useful because what I want to do is orientate the um, arrow uh, so that it matches up with the, the red arrow, the red arrow points north. And what I can do is use the reflection um, in the mirror to get it, uh, you know, to get it right. And that's useful if you sort of, if you're, if you're having to hold the compass up above eye level to, um, you know, to sight it on something. So very useful things to have these little, these little mirrors. Okay, so let me just do this properly first. And yeah, that's actually about right. So my bearing reading is here. So it's uh, 20 degrees. Uh, there's north there, 20 degrees. So now I've got a bearing on the, the tree over there with my compass, it's 20 degrees. And now I can put my compass away. I'm not gonna look at it until I reach that tree, but I have to remember, you know, which tree it is. You know, and that way I can, you know, look where I'm going, you know, cut where necessary. All I have to do is get to that tree and remember the number of paces. Now, I might not go in a straight line, you know, and that sort of, you know, worries some people, but don't let it, because if I have to sort of, um, you know, my, my track goes like this as I go there, uh, you know, and the pace count is longer than if I went in a straight line, it doesn't matter because, generally speaking, on the way back, it will be the same. You're still going to have to, you know, uh, uh, circumnavigate those little obstacles. So, you know, it kind of evens out. That's, that's been my experience. Okay, we'll go over there, take a back bearing and come back. Okay, so I've now arrived at the tree, and these are the, the notes that I've taken. Very important to have a notepad and pen. Yeah, my bearing is 20 degrees, the pace count was 16. I was counting every left step, um, and the, the, the sort of the, the ground was flat. I've just put F for flat, so you could put A for ascent, XA for extreme ascent, you know, whatever works for you. Okay, so now I want to go back to my motorbike, and uh, all I need to do is set this dial um, to 20 degrees, like so, and then I want to uh, I want to uh, turn my body and the compass. Don't just turn the compass like this. You know, you want to turn yourself and the compass until. Now what I'm doing because I'm doing a back bearing, I want south to be where the uh, the red arrow is. I want to line those up. So there we go. And now I sight it. And as I say, I can't see the motorbike, but I can see a tree. Um, you know, that is in, in the correct di direction, so I'm going to remember which tree that is, and then I'm going to walk towards it and walk 16 paces. So 16 paces later, you know, and I'm back at the motorbike, and, you know, it kind of illustrates something about navigation in the jungle, is that there's always something, because there are so many trees, there's always a tree that you can uh, take a bearing on. The problem with taking bearings in the jungle is it won't necessarily be that far away. It's not like being in open country where you can take a bearing on a mountain that's like far away and, you know, you, you just keep heading, um, you know, on that bearing towards that mountain, you know, which, which makes it very easy. In the jungle, you're doing it more often. You, you're forced to take more bearings. Um, but the advantage is there's always some, some tree that you can use as a marker to take a bearing against and then walk towards it. If you're not going like very far into the jungle, you know, you just want to go in, you know, like a small way to you know, look at something that you've seen, tree or whatever, um, you know, you don't necessarily need to be so precise. So, for example, for me, I mean, I've been into this sort of jungle area quite, quite you know, many times. And you know, what I'll do is just quickly check, you know, what direction, this is northwest here. So, you know, if I, if I go in, you know, northwest, I'm going to come out southeast. You know, as long as I go you know, roughly, I'm going to get it right. And, you know, again, it's something that's worth doing because this is where some friends of mine got lost because we're actually on a ridge line like that and they got lost and they decided to go down into the valley uh, and they knew if they came up, they'd uh, meet a road. The problem was they went the wrong way. They went 180 degrees the wrong way. And that's something you won't do with a compass, you know. So, it's, you know, you could just a quick check, even if you're only going, you know, 
a couple of hundred meters into the jungle there. You know, just check, okay, northwest, okay, coming out, southeast, easy. Okay, this is uh, Schneider. He's gone into the jungle with his football for some strange reason, but very sensibly he's brought a compass and, you know, tracked where he's gone. And I just want to use this to kind of show you how he then uses back bearings to get back to his Land Rover over there and how easy it is. Okay, so if we look at his notes, um, these are in order, so he now wants to do a back bearing on 245, pace 40, ground is flat. So all he has to do is set this to 245, and then because he's doing a back bearing, we now want the south pointing, um, the compass point to line up with the you know the the red arrow on the on the um, on the dial like that, and that'll give him the direction. So I just do that. Hang on, move over here. So we set it to two four five, and there you go. We've got a, like a a nice bearing to his checkpoint, which is this tree over here, and he's brought some tape in, so he's marked that. Okay, and then all he does has to do now is walk 40 paces from here and go over there. And then, once he reaches that checkpoint, or once you reach that checkpoint, a good idea is just to tick it off because then you remember that you've, uh, you've done that one and you won't get confused about where you are. Okay, so from, from the, the next checkpoint, the bearing is 300 when he, when he came in and the pace is 40. So now what he does is set this to 300. So get the south pointing part of the compass in line with the red needle because he's doing a back bearing, so it's the opposite way around. And you can see that lines up. He walks 40 paces and he'll find the next tree which he'll have marked in some way, either you know, here with a bit of plastic, but you know, he could just cut it with a parang or whatever. Okay, so he's been past two of um, his checkpoints. Uh, his third one, he wants to set at 20, back bearing of 20. Again, very easy. Set it at 20. Get the black line along the red line. And there you go, there, there's his bearing. And he just needs to walk 35 paces. Okay, so we've ticked off the third one. He's at his fourth checkpoint now. Uh, checks his bearing, 340. Set that at 340. It's really quite easy. And then uh, there's your bearing, which is going to take him in 20 paces back to the Land Rover. I mean, the, the other thing about travelling in the rainforest is there is a you know, big difference if, between going through secondary you know, jungle, you know, where it's going to be like this, and, you know, primary rainforest where, you know, you're going to have, like, big trees and not so much undergrowth. Now, you know, just, I mean, with jungle like this, a um, couple of things. One is it's unlikely you're going to go in a straight line because, you know, you're going to want to go around some of the main obstacles and not have to hack your way through. The other thing is, you know, um, is if you're cutting, like, with cutting like this, which you will be to some extent through the jungle, you're going to leave, um, mark, you know, here I've, I've cut the stem. It's, it's very obvious that, you know, when, when you're coming back, when you, to see things like this, certainly after a while, your eye, you know, you get your eye in and you start to notice that. In fact, just looking, I can see here, someone's cut, cut this before, I don't know who. Um, so, you know, it's in, in a sense, if I'm going through this, it's going to be easy for me to follow my way back out again because I will have just, I will have trailblazed whether I like it or not, I'll have to. But remember, I may not be, uh, you know, you may not be able to go in a, in a straight line. In primary rainforest, it's the other way around. You can go in a straight, straight line most of the time because there aren't all those obstacles in your way, but you won't be cutting as much. So it's in a sense easier to lose your way in less dense jungle than it, than it is to lose your way in very dense jungle. I just want to say like something about um, you know pace counting and pace of beads because you know, a lot of people get um, perhaps a little bit hung up about trying to calculate their pace on different types of terrain you know uh, you know if they're going uphill or downhill or whatever 
That's important if you're following a map and you're trying to estimate distance. What I find, you know, I'm doing is, is I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not that bothered about the empirical distance, I'm just bothered about how many paces it is, you know, so I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, you know, exactly how many paces I do to a kilometre or whatever. That's not the way I'm using it. But, you know, for example, from here to uh, the, my base camp up there, you know, I measured it the other day and I counted uh, 320 paces there. Then I, when I came back out, measured it to this tree, it was 316 paces. And, that, you know, this terrain goes up and down. The point is, I was only four paces out, you know, and I wasn't like being particularly careful or anything, just, you know, doing it normally. It's, it's very accurate. Um, and, you know, the reason it's important is if, if I walk 380 paces there and I haven't come to the base camp, I know I've done something wrong because, you know, it, it, I should only be about four, ten paces out. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a very good way of checking, you know, that you're going in the right direction. So, you know, pace counting, and putting in waypoints or checkpoints, either by marking the trees or you know some feature of the, the geography that you know you're going to remember, you know, really gives you that confidence um, that you're on the right trail and that you're going in the right direction. So you know, if you know how to use a compass and uh, you know you pace count and you've got like a notebook, there's really no reason why you should get lost in the jungle. I mean, as long as long as you're disciplined about it and you know um, precise. The key, the key thing to me, uh, you know, which I think sometimes people get a bit confused about, is the level of navigation that you need to do will depend on the situation that you're in. So, you know, if you're on a, on a very well-worn trail, it's very obvious, uh, you know, you don't need to have that same precision and uh, detail in, term, in your navigation as you do if you're, say, you know, just wandering off into, you know, the jungle to, to explore it, you know, for the first time and, and there's no trail at all. So you need to gauge uh, the level of navigation you need to do um, against the, the type of situation that you're in.